Deuteronomy chapter 30. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, for context, I'm going to pick up in verse 11. There is a, a portion of scripture, a statement here of truth that is brought out in uh, the book of Romans as well. But uh, I'm going to read from Deuteronomy chapter 11, and uh, we'll go down through the end of the chapter, verse 20. I'll read out loud as you follow along silently. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11, the Bible says, For this commandment which I command thee this day... It is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. So what he's going to command is not so far out that you can't get a hold of it. It's not someplace far off that you can say, well, if I would have known that, I, I would have done it. He says, it's, it's near, it is here, it's in your mouth. You're going to be able to understand it and you will be able to do it. Then he says in first, verse 15, this is what he is saying unto them. He prefaced with saying that uh, the commandment that he gives and the words that he states, you're going to be able to grasp it. You're going to be able to get a hold of it. And then he's going to say what he wanted to give you. He says, verse 15, see. You, you ever said that to somebody <laughs> to get the attention? Hey. See, look, get somebody's attention. And so God needs to get our attention. So he says, see, I have set before thee this day life and good, a death and evil, uh, opposites, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods, little g-gods, and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall utterly perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passeth over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear God, for the songs that have been sung, special singing, congregation, choir, that brings honor to Jesus. We thank you, dear God, for the people that have been able to come out this morning to church, praying for those that were unable to be here. There are many that are sick, that are afflicted. And dear God, we uh, pray for them that you heal their bodies, raise them back up, and allow them to know that a church is praying for them. We thank you for the word of God that we have just read and that you make it uh, able to be understood. And it's before us. And dear God, for the wonderful choice that you've given to us, dear God, we're not robots, we're a free will agent. Help us, dear God, to grasp that truth and then allow the word of God to apply to our hearts. I'm praying this morning, dear God, that the people that are here are saved, will give you glory and honor, and the people that are here that uh, are not saved, 
Dear God, that they will get saved. And sweet Holy Spirit of God, you would allow those to understand that need to get saved. And dear God, that you would resonate with those who are saved and praise you and thank you for your wonderful promises, for the Word of God. I ask you to forgive me of my sin and fill me with thy spirit and help me to be able to preach and teach the Word of God. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. As you, you, you could hold your spot there for a moment. I want you to notice something as well in Jeremiah chapter 21. You can hold your spot in Deuteronomy chapter 30 in Jeremiah and in chapter 21. You would understand from a historical standpoint chronological standpoint, biblical standpoint, that uh, Joshua is uh, a book that was written uh, after the time of Deuteronomy. Moses is accredited for the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. Moses, the prophet of God. He's attributed to the Pentateuch of writing Deuteronomy through the Holy Spirit of God, of course. And, and Joshua uh, I'm, I'm sorry, and Jeremiah, who is one of the major prophets in time-wise, would be uh, long after that. All right? But notice the same word of God that God told Jeremiah to tell the people again. Now watch this in Jeremiah 21 and verse 8. Jeremiah 21, verse 8. The Bible says, And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. Now, I hope that you can see from Jeremiah 21, 8, that it's, it's the same kind of phraseology as in Deuteronomy. So in, in Deuteronomy, in uh, chapter 30, uh, again, I, I want you to notice this in verse 19, that God is using Moses to tell the people, that I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Watch this. That I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed uh, may live. Verse 15 that connects to that says, I'm setting that before you this day. So with God it's always today. That God sets this truth before you today, this day. And it was the same then as it was in Jeremiah's day when God said, I, this is what I want you to tell the people. I'm setting before you life and death. And it is it's the same message as of today. And, and here is the message from Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. What God sets before us. What God sets before us. And you, you see it in Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19. I have set before you. Now he says it in verse 15. I set before you. He said it in Jeremiah 21 and verse 8. I set before you. And so God sets this before you. And he sets it before you this day. What, what is it that he sets before us? Well he tells us uh, life and death. You could say life or death. That he sets that before you. Uh, life and death, verse 19. And then uh, not only life and death, but he sets before you blessing and cursing. And he, he always sets this before us with a choice. Because he says, therefore choose. And so God didn't choose for you. And God doesn't choose for you. Uh, you choose. He sets the truth before you. And then he allows you to choose. And it's always a choice. And uh, everyone has been given by God the ability to make the choice. And I'll interject this into the truth as we get going. Uh, babies and people that have been born without the mental faculty to choose are exemptions. They, get, they go to heaven. Babies, before they reach the age of accountability, if they die, praise God, they go to heaven. Amen. They didn't choose. They couldn't choose. 
People that have been born, not acquired it, but have been born with an absolute mental incapacity to make choice, to make that choice, they go to heaven. Now, is, is there uh, the, the Bible verse for that? It, it, it's, it's a Bible truth throughout the Word of God, the holiness of God, the goodness of God, the story of David and his baby. Babies go to heaven if they die before they reach the age of accountability. And so do people who have never gained the ability to make a choice. You say, who are they? I don't know. It's not those that acquire the inability. It's those who were absolutely born without the ability. Everybody else has to make a choice. The ones that I just mentioned, you say, uh, how are they covered? They're, they're covered by the blood. Where John the Baptist said, behold the Lamb of God that does what? Taketh away the sin of the world. They're, they're covered by the blood. But when a, an individual reaches the age of accountability, to be able to choose, to know, here's your verse for that, for him to know it to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. And I, I've told you, and you know, used to, I, I would kind of wrestle with that verse about why does it say to him it is sin? For anybody to know good and doeth it not is sin. But the Bible makes it very specific and personal for him to know it to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. It's been attributed to your account. To know to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And so the Bible says that he lays before you here a choice. Everybody has to make a choice. Now, what has God said before us? Here's the message uh, quickly this morning. That God has set before us a path in life. God has set before us a path in life. In verse 15, the Bible says, See, I have set before thee this day a life and good and death and evil. God has set before us, God has set before you a path in life. It can be good in following God or it can be evil. You could probably allow your mind to consider somebody today that you would say that they chose the wrong path. And it's not going well. And you could look at the individual and you may even go a step further and say they, they, they chose an evil path. You can look at their life and see that they've chosen the wrong path. Uh, God didn't choose that for them. They chose it. Or you could consider an individual and say, well, they, they chose a good path. They chose it. God sets it before you. And God sets before every one of us a path. And he sets that before uh, you and I. Notice this in Psalm chapter 16 for just a moment. In Psalm chapter 16, the Bible is true that God sets before you and I a path. It can be the good path. It could be the, uh, the evil path, and, and you have to make a, a choice in the matter. The Bible says in Psalm 16 and in verse 11, Thou wilt show me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. That's what is included when an individual chooses the good path. That God lays before them. God lays before you this path. It's the path of life. And David says, Thou will show me the path of life. And in thy presence, meaning that in this path of life is the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. Does it mean there's not bumps along the road in the path? Doesn't mean that at all. At thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. He'll show you that path. In fact, if you go a little further into the Proverbs and in chapter 3, I said this morning that God sets before you a path in life. In Proverbs and in chapter 3, 
In Proverbs and in chapter 3, verse 5, the Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, now watch this, and he shall direct thy paths. God lays before you this morning a path. And everyone can make the choice on that. Everybody gets the choice. The Bible here says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, God, and he, God, shall direct thy, your path. It doesn't say he will dictate your path. He says he will direct your path. Some would say, that they would wish that God would dictate their path. Simply, don't let me go the wrong way. Don't uh, allow me to make a mistake. Don't allow me to go in this direction. Typically, when an individual says that, they're already born again child of God because before that, they don't want God directing their path. They don't want God doing that. They want to go their own way. But after an individual gets saved and they, they realize that, that they, they want God directing their path, you would rather just God would dictate your path. Typically, the only people that say they would like God to direct and even dictate their path is those who are saved, born again, because in human nature, nobody likes being told what to do. I, I don't know that I've met somebody that likes being told what to do. And the Bible says we will not have this man to rule over us. Typically, if an individual uh, messes up, they say, well, nobody told me. No, nobody told me that. And then, if, if, if they get something right and somebody else gets something wrong, they say, I told them so. He or she wouldn't listen, I, I told them. Most people have to learn from their own mistakes, and yet God allows every individual the free will choice to decide. He sets before you a path in life. An individual child of God can have their path directed by God. He doesn't dictate, he directs. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, 18, but the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more into the perfect day. What's it mean, preacher? It means that a child of God, as they will allow the Word of God to be a lamp to their feet and a light to their path, and they walk in the right direction, God shines more light, more light, more light, all the way until they uh, get home to be in heaven with God. We talked about Enoch, that uh, Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for the Lord took him. It's a picture of the rapture that's going to take place, and uh, Enoch got up every day and simply walked with God. To, to walk with God is to be obedient to God. To walk with God is to fellowship with God. To walk with God is going in the same direction as God and having God to, the, to direct your path. And he did that for Enoch. And there's a picture of one day that God just took him home. And one day God's going to take us home. He, he has a, a path for you in life. In Psalm chapter 37, I like the fact that God gives you and I a choice. He doesn't make you and He doesn't dictate you, but He does direct you. And that's if you are willing. And He sets this before you. And He says, choose. God didn't choose for you. You choose. And, and, and I want to say this as we make something very practical before we pass on that. 
If you've gotten to the place in life where you say, well, there's been some, you know, difficult bumps in, in my past and in the road and so forth, and you come to this conclusion, well, I just kind of will, I, I've already gone too far. You've not gone too far. You haven't gotten off the beaten path too far. God will redirect your steps. God can pick up the broken pieces. God can mend it. God can get you back on the path. The Bible is full of people that have sinned against God, got right with God, and then were used of God. And then the devil gets on your back and sometimes says you've gone too far. You, you haven't gone too far if God spoke to your heart about that. How do I know? Because he says the word of God is not too far. You can get this. I set before you a choice this morning. Good and evil, life and death. Choose this morning. Choose. And you have to choose. In Psalm 37 and in verse 23, the Bible says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Look at verse 24. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. If you're in the building and uh, the path of life has gotten you off the right path, you can get back on the right path with God. Look at one more before we hurriedly pass by. Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26. In Isaiah chapter 26, the Bible says, The way of the just is uprightness. Thou most upright dost weigh the path of the just. He's speaking about God when he says most upright. Thou most upright. The way of the just, or an individual who is saved and right with God, is uprightness. Thou, God, who is most upright, dost weigh the path of the just, or consider. If you do right in the sight of God, you will get divine guidance in life. He says, I've set before you a path this morning. If you're on the wrong path, you can get on the right path. And you can get guidance from God throughout the path of life. Here's number two, and hurriedly, that God sets before us, every one of us, a path in life. He says, uh, set that before you this day, good and evil, life and death, blessing and cursing. And not only a path in life, but he sets before you and I a priority in life. He says, therefore choose. Therefore choose life. Therefore, choose life. God is prompting you and I to choose life. He doesn't choose for you, but He's prompting you and I. Therefore, choose life. It's a priority. Choose life and living over death and dying. But it is your choice. In this priority in the New Testament, Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Uh, God always desires and God always demands first place, and he should have first place in the life of the child of God. But the individual has to choose that. You remember the rich young ruler that came to Jesus? What must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, what does the scripture say? Remember, the scriptures is not far from you. You can understand it. And the, the young man said the right things of what he had done, what he hadn't done, and so forth. So in his mind and in his thinking, he should have eternal life. And, and Jesus said, uh, Go and sell what thou hast. Give to the poor. Come, take up our cross and follow me. Why? Because he saw something lacking. He saw that his life was bent on the covetous spirit. 
That was what was wrong. There's something that's holding an individual back from following Jesus. And it can be many and it can be varied, but behind it is always the devil, the evil one that has blinded the minds of those who believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine unto them. And they would be delivered. In this very building today, there's individuals who are saved, individuals who are not saved. Individuals who say, I'm saved, but I'm, I'm not following Jesus in the right path. There is a wide range that God says, I'm going to set before you of the path of life and the, the path of death. Good and evil. There's a path that's set before you. There is the priority in life that an individual would say, by the grace of God, I'm choosing life. I'm choosing Jesus above any and all things. Devil doesn't want you to get saved. Devil doesn't want you serving after you get saved. He says before you a priority. The priority is serving God where Jesus said, I'm sorry, where Joshua said, but as for me and my house, but as for me and my house, He said, if you want to serve the gods of your fathers, you can serve those little G gods. If you want to serve the world and the flesh and the devil and, and get what it gets, you can do that because it's a choice. But he said, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Joshua 24, 15. Every individual in here today could make that statement fresh and anew. Friends, just for a moment, look around you at the world. Just, just, just help me out here. It is the world getting better? It is the world getting worse? The, the world is getting worse. How, how do you know that? You can look around. But the Bible says, evil men and seducers waxing worse and worse. You need Jesus. I need Jesus. This church needs Jesus. Amen. This country needs Jesus. Your house needs Jesus. Uh, everybody here today uh, ought to say, fresh and anew. Today, fresh and anew, I'm choosing the path of life. I'm choosing the priority of life that Jesus is the head of my home. Jesus is the head of my house. Jesus is in charge of my life. Jesus is a priority. God told Moses, this is what I want you to tell the people. God told Jeremiah, I want you to tell them the same thing. I, I set this before you, and it is the message today. You look in, and you look out, and you look up. You need Jesus. Amen. That's the priority. Who or what is the priority in your life? Has the path gotten off the beaten path to where you are wrestling so much you can't see through all of the stuff to see that God wants to get you back? On the right path with Jesus. Here's last. God says before you a path in life. Praying that the young people will choose the right path. Praying that the senior saints would choose the right path. Get on the right path. God sets before you and I a priority. Choose this day. Choose this day. And then God says before you and I a place after this life. Life and death, good, evil, it's either heaven or hell. God sets before you a place that's after this life. I know you would like to discard that thinking, kind of neglect that thinking, but the reality of it is 
that God sets before you a place after this life. Life, the Bible speaks of both temporal and eternal. And so does death. You and I hanging on to this temporal life, thinking about uh, whatever age bracket that we're in, whatever that we can attain to, how can I have love, joy, and peace, and all of the needs in this life? And some people neglect what's going to take place after this life. When God always puts the emphasis on what's going to take place after this life. This life's temporal. 70, 80, 90, and 100. But then it's like a vapor. Vanishes away. And then what do you have? What, 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 what do you have? Life is temporal, but also eternal. Choose life. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He wants you to choose life. He said, I came that they might have life, and that they might have life more. My Father is greater than all. No man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. He wants to give you eternal life this morning. God delivers you from hell and the wrath to come. God determined that Jesus would taste death for every man. God determined that Jesus would take your sin debt. God determined that Jesus would take the wrath of God for you. When did he determine that? Before the foundations of the world. That Jesus, hanging and bleeding on an old rugged cross as the substitutionary death, tasted death for every man. He's the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. It means of those that would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, God has allowed Jesus to take your penalty. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But through it all, God has designed you with a choice. God's not going to make a choice. I'm almost done. Look at this verse again, John 5, 20. One of the greatest things that God has done for you and I is given you a choice. You can choose the path. He sets it before you. But it says choose. Choose. Choose life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Choose Jesus. In John 5, 40, the Bible allows us to understand that God designed man with a choice. He did from the garden on up to and including today. Look at verse 39. The Bible says, John 5, 39, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. In searching the scriptures, it means that you have the word of God. If an individual can say, I know where there is the path of life for eternal life, and that after this life, you'll never grow old. You'll never grow sick. What would a man give in exchange for his soul? Now that, that truth is, is laid out for you right here in, in the Word of God. It's not that you have to go to heaven and pull the Word down or go to the other side of the sea and pull the Word in. It's right here where he said... Uh, it shows the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. God promises you eternal life. It's in the word of God for you this morning. And you can have that if you don't have it this morning. If you've never been saved, never been born again, 
God is not going to make the choice for you. You can choose. And for everybody else that has made the profession of faith in Christ, that I know, preacher, that I'm saved, born again, child of God, and the preacher pushes back and says, how do you know that? Well, why does he push back with that? Why, why does he seem pushy? Because God says, I have set before you life and death, good and evil, therefore choose life. Why would he probe around and ask? The question is your soul-searching question. Has there come a time in your life when you ask Jesus to come into your life and to save you from your sins? And by childlike faith have accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. He says, search the scripture for in them you think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. Salvation is in the person of Jesus. Sarah got saved as the ministry here, accepted Christ as her personal Lord and Savior. And then uh, after some time and teaching, believe that she should follow through in believer's baptism. So praise God, we present to you Sarah Meeks today that will follow the Lord in believer's baptism. Sierra Meeks, upon your profession of faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I now baptize thee in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Calendar. No money maker, upon your profession of faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I now baptize thee in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.